learning experience. This lesson is for Wednesday, April 15th. Um, and yeah, happy Wednesday. Hope you guys had a nice Tuesday. Hope you were able to do some work and make up any work that you're missing beforehand. But um, today we are going to start with DNA replication. Okay, so today and tomorrow we're going to cover the steps of DNA replication and what actually happens. I'm going to be splitting DNA replication into two lessons because I think there's a lot that goes on and I want to I want you to be able to kind of digest it um, little by little because I think it can be a pretty complicated subject okay so make sure you guys fill out the notes as you go so that way you can uh, stay on task and stay organized okay but once we're done with DNA replication we are gonna get right into genetics um, probably next week and I'm really excited for genetics I think there's a lot of really cool things that go along with genetics and so yeah I'm very excited for that unit but without further ado let's get into today's lesson okay so today's lesson is on DNA replication and we're gonna talk about the first two steps of DNA replication with our first two key players that I talked about last week. Those two key players being helicase and primase. Okay, those are the two of the four. Okay, so helicase is kind of the star of the show in the first step of DNA replication. Okay, so remember this is the process that allows us to copy DNA so that it can be ready to go once cells are ready to divide. Okay, so there's four different enzymes that I'm going to highlight in DNA replication, and the first one is helicase. Okay, if you remember from the video introducing the four different enzymes, helicase is the unzipper. Okay, so what helicase actually does is I'm going to draw helicase like a little triangle like this, all right? That's going to be helicase. All right, is it actually goes through the DNA strand and kind of unzips it, okay? So just think of it as like a zipper that you can kind of um, zip down to unzip something. I don't really know how else to describe it, okay? But initially, DNA is all tied up like this. And remember, those bases, those nitrogen bases, are bonded together. But helicase actually breaks those bonds, so it actually ends up looking something like this, okay? So helicase kind of started right around here, and then it made its way over here and starts to unzip the DNA, okay? So this is part of DNA that is still held together, all right? And this is the part that is unzipped. And I'm actually going to be zooming into this part so that I can actually show you um, how DNA goes about replicating itself, okay? So helicase starts to go through, unwind that DNA, so we have our two separate, separate strands right here. We have a green strand, and then we have a blue strand down below, okay? And then helicase will actually continue to unzip this DNA, but I'm actually just going to show you a small portion of it. But just know that it'll just it'll keep on going until the whole thing has been replicated. Okay, so that is the very first step of DNA replication: is that helicase unzips the DNA. Okay, so I'm going to move on to step two of DNA replication, which is a little bit more complicated. So, um, if you guys remember, the other day, I think it was Monday, we talked about a new nucleic acid that's called RNA, okay? And remember that RNA is a single-stranded molecule, not double-stranded like DNA, that helps to make proteins, okay? So RNA, remember, it's a little bit different than DNA because it has, it has almost all the same bases. So RNA has A, C, G, but remember it has U instead of DNA, all right, which has A, C, G, and T, okay? So DNA has those four bases, RNA, G, 
just has uracil instead of thymine, okay? So what we need to do before we even add on to the DNA strands is make sure that we kind of prime the DNA molecule and get it ready for replication, okay? So our next enzyme that we're gonna work with, which is DNA polymerase, actually helps to build the new strands of DNA, but it needs some direction from DNA primase, okay? And DNA primase pretty much tells DNA, uh, DNA polymerase where to start, okay? So I'm gonna write that down somewhere. Primase helps polymerase know where to begin. So it's kind of as if you were um, maybe starting like a puzzle or something and you're not really sure what you're doing. So maybe you ask a friend of yours who is very good at puzzles and they kind of help you know where to start the puzzle. So that's kind of like primase with DNA polymerase. It just says, hey, DNA polymerase, you need to start right over here, okay? And so these black boxes right here, all right, with some nuclear, or with some bases attached, these are the RNA primers. Okay, so this is also an RNA primer, and this one is also an RNA primer. Okay, so these guys are going to help DNA polymerase know where to go once DNA polymerase gets into the picture. Something else I forgot to do that I want to go back and show you really quick is I did include the nitrogen bases in our DNA molecule, and I also included a key as to what they are. Hang on a sec. So in our DNA molecule that we're dealing with, I did have our four bases labeled in different colors, okay? So A is going to be represented by the color red, T is going to re be represented by green, C is represented by black, and G is represented by blue. So A, red, T, green, C, black, G, blue, okay? So I'm going to write this on our current strand also, just to make sure we all get the picture. All right. So A is red, T is blue, or green, colorblind apparently. C is black, I think and G is blue. Okay, so the same is going to be said right here. All right, so as you can see before, these were pulled apart, these strands were pulled apart, I lined them up in a way that A was still bonded to T and C was still bonded to G, okay? An important thing to note about these RNA primers, okay, is that they will still have the same structure as RNA. So instead of having A, C, G, and T, it's gonna have A, C, G, and U, okay? So this is a little bit difficult for me to label on here, but instead of there being a, wherever there is supposed to be a T on RNA, there's going to be a U, okay? So looking at this RNA primer right here, we have this RNA primer is going to bond to this DNA strand, okay? So this C, or this G right here is bonded to this C. This, um, oh, this is what I wanted to talk about, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in on this primer right now. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. Okay, so that's me zooming in real quick to this primer. Okay, so I have a blue which is G. I have a green, which would normally be T, but I'm going to get back to that. And then I have a red, which is A. Okay. So normally this green would be a T. Okay. But since this is RNA, 
this green strand right here is actually a U, okay? But U will still bond to adenine, okay? So uracil will bond to adenine. I'm going to write that up here. So A will bind to T, but A will also bind to U, okay? So this would just be DNA right here, of an example of base pairing, and this would be RNA right here, okay? It's the same thing except A is bonded to U instead of A binding to T. Okay, so this is just a zoomed in version of that RNA primer, and you can see that there's a U instead of a T, okay? Hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion, okay? So, another important thing that I wanna note that I'm going to talk about again tomorrow is DNA's directionality, okay? So if you guys remember, DNA has directions, okay? So it has three prime and five prime. We talked about a little bit about that in the DNA structure video, okay? It's kind of like the north and south or the east and west, all right? Except they're just the directions of DNA are called three prime and five prime, okay? So these RNA primers actually set up in a way that helps DNA polymerase go in the proper direction, okay? Because in this scenario, we are going to be replicating DNA in this direction, okay? So we're gonna be going towards this part right here, all right? So we are going to be going in the direction of five prime to three prime, okay? And that is the direction that DNA polymerase works, okay? So DNA polymerase, can only build from five prime to three prime. Okay, so DNA polymerase isn't that crazy or that, I guess, special because it only can really build in one direction, okay? I'm not trying to bash DNA polymerase. Obviously, it's very cool, but it can only build and add nitrogen bases in one direction, okay? And so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that tomorrow and how DNA polymerase works differently on this top strand versus this bottom strand, okay? So I think that's going to conclude today's video before I confuse anybody else, but tomorrow's video is going to be about DNA polymerase and lastly, DNA ligase, okay? Because those are going to wrap up DNA replication. So the steps that we went over today are um, helicase unzipping the DNA and primase making an RNA primer. And these primers help DNA polymerase know where to begin building the new DNA strands, okay? So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday. Make sure to stay safe and healthy and get outside. It's very nice out and do something fun today.